Welcome learners to this session on primary health care and health concerns of women. We all are aware that worldwide, women and girls bear the brunt of chronic food insecurity which leads to their nutrition uh, insecurities. We are aware that majority of the women across the world face a lot of discrimination. In India, women face a lot of problems related to their access and availability to primary health care. Many of you are already aware of this. This is compounded with discriminatory social norms where patriarchy uh, threatens their own food securities. So where women are entrepreneurs, caregivers and gatekeepers of food security, they grow crops and they are caregivers at home. The very role, their very subjugation leads to their own insecurity and their livelihood. So these dimensions have to be looked into when it comes to the health concerns of women and uh, how the primary health care system and the services in the public health system are going through changes in India uh, as this has been promised by the Indian constitution as health is a right of every individual. After listening to this session, you will be able to identify the programs and schemes targeted at primary health care in India. You will be able to explain the role of public health system in improving the health outcomes of women and children in India. You will be able to describe the importance of maternal and child health and the causes and effects of nutritional problems they face and highlight the importance of health communication in tackling availability and accessibility to healthcare in rural areas. Now let us look at the National Health Policy 2017. We have had National Health Policy earlier as well, but uh, in the purview of this session, we shall be discussing about the National Health Policy of 2017. This health policy aims to inform, clarify, strengthen and prioritize the role of government in shaping health systems in all its dimensions, such as prevention of diseases and promotion of good health through cross-sectoral action, access to technologies, building knowledge base required for good health and much more. The policy emphasizes reorienting and strengthening the public health institutions across the country so as to provide universal access to free drugs, diagnostics and other essential health care. The policy assures availability of free, comprehensive primary health care services for all aspects of reproductive, maternal, child and adolescent health and for the most prevalent communicable, non-communicable and occupational diseases in the population. So the very fact that we have such a national health policy in place today uh, underlines the uh, role of primary health care services in providing health services to all of the population. The National Health Mission was launched by Government of India in 2005. It encompasses two sub-missions under it, the National Rural Health Mission and the National Urban Health Mission. The main programmatic components of the National Health Mission include health systems strengthening in rural and urban areas, reproductive, maternal, neonatal, child and adolescent health, RMNCH plus A, popularly known, and communicable and non-communicable diseases. Now this RMNCH plus A also focuses on adolescent reproductive and sexual health because much of the maternal health in India is focused on uh, adolescent reproductive health because many of the adolescent girls get married at that age and they are forced into the process of childbearing at that age. Hence, we have a lot of focus on ARSH, which is Adolescent Reproductive and Sexual Health, which comes under the ambit of RMNCH plus A. 
Now, the National Health Mission envisages achievement of universal access to equitable, affordable and quality healthcare services that are accountable and responsive to people's needs. Now, let us see the structure of the public health facilities in rural areas. We shall not be discussing this part in detail, but largely we need to understand that the public health facilities in rural areas operate broadly at three levels, that is at three tiers. The sub-health centers, SHCs, each SHC is supposed to serve a population of 3,000 in tribal and hilly areas and a population of 5,000 people in plains. The primary health centers, PHCs, they are popularly known of. Each PHC is supposed to serve a population of 20,000 in tribal and hilly areas and a population of 30,000 in the plains. Then we have the community health centers, CHC, each CHC is supposed to serve a population of 80,000 in tribal and hilly areas and a population of 1,20,000 in the plains. So you can see that the community health centers oversee the primary health centers and the primary health centers oversee the sub-health centers. Now let us uh, talk about the National Rural Health Mission. Uh, we all are familiar with this mission, uh, which is a primary focus uh, area in today's session. Reproductive and Child Health, which is short, uh, short form as RCH services, have been the primary focus in the National Rural Health Mission. The implementation of Janani Suraksha Yojana and accredited social health activists have worked towards behavioral changes in community women and brought women in several numbers to avail health care from public health institutions. We all know that public health institutions uh, do not get uh, accessed by women in rural areas. So this was seen earlier uh, by our government of India, which is why the JSY and ASHAs were introduced in the National Rural Health Mission. The role of ASHAs is to act as mobilizers for institutional deliveries, do integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness, advise home-based neonatal care and much more. ASHAs have huge potential to work on and community-based interventions. These interventions can also be facilitated and monitored by Village Health Sanitation and Nutrition Committee and other such groups and schemes. So we can see that the role of ASHA has immense potential. Now uh, after discussing about the National Rural Health Mission, I'd also like to discuss about India's ICDS program which is Integrated Child Development Scheme which is one of the largest uh, social welfare programs in the world. India's ICDS program was initiated in 1970s and universalized in 2006. It is India's flagship nutrition program and aims to improve the health and nutrition of pregnant and lactating women and children below the age of 6. The ICDS delivers a set of core services including food supplementation, nutrition and health education, growth monitoring and referral and non-formal preschool education through Anganwadi centers managed by an Anganwadi worker and an Anganwadi helper. About 1.4 million Anganwadi centers under ICDS function as preschool daycare centers. So we see that it is quite integrated the scheme which aims at uh, enhancing the health and nutritional needs of pregnant and lactating women and children below the age of 6. So we also need to know that the reproductive and child health component of the National Rural Health Mission is integrated into the ICDS. Additionally, the ICDS provides immunization services and health checkups in collaboration with the health department. The aim of these services together is to address maternal and child nutrition, health and development in the first 1000 days after conception. So the last four decades or more have seen universalization of ICDS and efforts to strengthen the quality and reach of services in ICDS, particularly in India's different states. Now let us talk about women's health because we have so far very briefly discussed about 
uh, the the structure of the public health system in India and what are the different major uh, missions and schemes. Now let us focus on women's health based on which we could relate their needs for primary health care. Women are the most vulnerable when it comes to health. I have already mentioned this in the beginning of the session. Women, especially pregnant and lactating women, face undernutrition and anemia and the factors related to this are low dietary intake, repeated pregnancy and lactation and infections resulting in low birth weight of offsprings. And all this is much deep rooted in uh, our culture, our uh, traditional practices as well as patriarchy. Then India today is also grappling with overnutrition. How come? There is a rise in all segments seen in urban and rural areas for overnutrition. It is associated with increase in prevalence of non-communicable diseases also known as NCDs. So women today bear the triple burden of malnutrition which is undernutrition, overnutrition and of course now what are malnutritional related issues? Malnutrition is the largest single contributor to disease in the world. Malnutrition is not affected by food intake alone. Let us be aware of this. It is also influenced by access to health services, quality care for children and pregnant mother. But like I said, girls bear the brunt of chronic food insecurity on their development. It affects their development drastically. Pregnancies in adolescents result in anemia, nutritional anemia, spontaneous abortion, stillbirths and often death. There are persisting ideas of marriage as women's primary life trajectory in India and adverse sex ratio means that marriage is not delayed beyond the age seen as reproduction. That means the message is very clear that girls in rural areas and tribal areas even today are talked into marriage the moment they attain menarche that is the onset of menstruation, the age of reproduction. Malnutrition is intergenerational meaning it takes a few generations for the once malnourished girl to become the grandmother of a well nourished girl. Let us see what this intergenerational cycle of malnutrition is. You can see that a malnourished woman on the left corner of the diagram, you can see that a malnourished woman has a low weight gain during pregnancy and this in turn leads to higher maternal mortality or death and also simultaneously it could even if the mother survives it could lead to inadequate fetal nutrition now what happens here is the baby is born with low birth weight and this low birth weight uh, baby uh, can grow up into a stunted child with reduced mental capacity. Why is the child stunted? It is also related to other factors like untimely or inadequate feeding, frequent infections, inadequate food health and care. And then of course a stunted child who has reduced mental capacity would grow up into a stunted adolescent because of inadequate food, health and care due to the nutritional insecurity faced by uh, the adolescent child. So a stunted adolescent has reduced physical capacity and fat free mass and then again the same stunted adolescent girl uh, does not have adequate food leading to inadequate diet uh, and uh, nutritional capacities, health and care. Again the same stunted adolescent because of these factors uh, is unaware of these nutritional implications she is facing and gets married during the same uh, stunted adolescent stage. So this is a vicious uh, intergenerational cycle of malnutrition which leads to 
higher mortality rate of women their impaired mental development and this also leads to increased risk of adult chronic disease or diseases so just to uh, underline the aspect of uh, the severity uh, and impact of uh, maternal health issues caused due to nutritional deficiencies throughout the life cycle of women now what are the causes and effects of nutritional problems in india anemia is the second most common cause of maternal deaths it begins right from infancy continues into childhood increases in severity during adolescence in girls gets aggravated during pregnancy and among elderly prevalence is higher in northern and eastern states compared to southern and western states of india there is high prevalence of anemia due to low overall dietary intake poor iron and folic acid intake poor bioavailability of iron in fighted fiber rich indian diet chronic blood loss due to infections such as malaria and hookworm infestation now epidemiological studies from india documented the magnitude and adverse consequences of chronic energy deficiency on the mother child diet nutritional problem is caused not only by deficiency of protein calorie iron vitamin c and other uh, nutrients but also by malaria worm infestation and by adverse environmental and socio demographic factors so the association of nutritional problems with adverse maternal outcomes like puerperal sepsis antepartum hemorrhage postpartum hemorrhage all related to uh you know prenatal and postnatal stages are also responsible for low birth weight premature birth high perinatal mortality rate and decreased work capacity of women with increasing age we are also seeing that there is steady and substantial increase in overnutrition rates in women since 1998 as depicted by the national family health service 3 and 4 by the government of india over nutrition rates are higher in southern and western states in india there is rise in over nutrition associated with increase in non communicable diseases and exclusive breastfeeding is an important determinant for comprehensive growth and development of infants particularly of low birth weight this combats diseases by increasing child's immune status which is exclusive breastfeeding now what are the programs uh that target nutrition outcomes today we have an uh, a long list of programs uh, which are targeted at nutrition and also health outcomes like i already said health and nutrition are intrinsically uh, related so uh, the status of the child girl child and mothers is important as their nutritional status influences the status of the girl child prima facie So the Swachh Bharat Mission and the Beti Bachao Beti Padhao missions have been launched to tackle these. There are some existing programs that target nutrition outcomes directly and indirectly. These are the ICDS which we discussed, the National Nutrition Mission, the Village Health and Nutrition Days, the Poshan Abhiyan, National Health Mission which uh, has the Rashtriya Kishor Swasthya Karyakram, Janani Suraksha Yojana. जननी शिशु सुरक्षा कार्यक्रम प्रधानमंत्री सुरक्षित मातृत्व अभियान मैटर्निटी बेनिफिट स्कीम विच हैज कंडीशनल कैश ट्रांसफर स्कीम वी ऑल्सो हैव द राष्ट्रीय बाल स्वास्थ्य कार्यक्रम फोकस्ड एट चिल्ड्रन चिल्ड्रंस हेल्थ मिशन इंद्रधनुष नेशनल रूरल ड्रिंकिंग वाटर प्रोग्राम मातृत्व सहयोग योजना सबला फॉर अडोलसेंस मिड डे मील स्कीम targeted public distribution system national food security mission mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme national rural livelihood mission etc so many of the programs target nutrition outcomes uh, particularly of uh, women and they also try to cover those aspects of malnutrition undernutrition which we just discussed uh, some time back Now uh, I would like to highlight here some of the key findings of the National Family Health Survey 5 2019 to 
which states that the full immunization drive among children of 12 to 23 months has seen substantial improvement. More than two thirds are fully immunized in all states and union territories except the states of Nagaland, Meghalaya and Assam which are in the northeast. So in almost three fourths of districts, 70 percent or more children aged 12 to 23 months have been fully immunized against childhood diseases which is a good number as compared to the uh, data which has been shown in the previous national uh, family health surveys. Increase in percentage of women receiving recommended four or more antenatal care visits by health providers in 13 states or union territories between 2015-16 uh, to 2019-20 has been seen. Probably this is because of the architectural changes which have been made in the National Rural Health Mission and the integration of the services and schemes. Now the institutional births which is being largely promoted by the government of India through the ASHAs has increased substantially. Over four-fifth women delivering in institutions in 19 states and union territories. It is over 90% in 14 to 22 states and union territories. There is substantial increase in C-section in many states or union territories especially in private facilities. Now the sex ratio at birth has remained unchanged or increased in most states or union territories. Majority of the states are in normal sex ratio of 952 or above. The sex ratio at birth is below 900 in the states of Telangana, Himachal Pradesh, Goa and union territory of Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. Child nutrition indicators show a mixed pattern across states. Situation improved in many states or union territories and minor deterioration in others. Like I already mentioned earlier, maternal health and child health is intrinsically uh, related and they cannot be uh, understood exclusively. Anemia among women and children continues to be a major cause of Concern. More than half of the children and women are anemic in 13 of the 22 states uh, union territories. Several states reversed the course and recorded worsening levels of child malnutrition despite improvements in sanitation and better access to fuel and drinking water. States have either witnessed meager improvements or sustained reversals on four key metrics of child under five years of age for their malnutrition parameters which is child stunting, child wasting, share of children underweight and child mortality rate. The data from these metrics is also used in several global indices such as the global hunger index. So if you look at the global hunger index you can see that India ranks very low. It is because of these indicators and also because of the prevalence of anemia which has been prevalent earlier and is still prevalent. So this prevalence of anemia is sustained and uh, is not getting reversed. Most surprising reversals have happened in child stunting which reflects chronic undernutrition. Stunting has long lasting adverse effects on the cognitive and physical development of a child which we have discussed earlier also. In rural India, micronutrient deficiencies such as low levels of iron, folic acid and vitamin B12 and malnutrition in pregnant women have been associated with an increased risk of a low birth weight baby or a small for gestational age infant. Two of five stunted children live in South Asia and globally the prevalence of stunting and underweight in children under five has decreased by more than 25% between 1990 and 2016. But this progress will not be sufficient to meet the UN Sustainable Goal 2 of having less than 100 million stunted under 5 children by 2025. Now food security, ending of hunger and improving nutrition are the second topmost targets of the UN Sustainable Development Goals because undernutrition is responsible for almost half of under 5 child deaths in low and middle income countries. Improving nutrition is an important strategy to and preventable deaths in children under 5 which is the third topmost target of the sustainable development goals. Improving birth weight and infant and young child feeding practices are critical in reducing child undernutrition, child morbidity and child mortality in India. 
Now, what are the challenges to utilization of public health services? Of course, many of us are aware, but to those who are not aware, this is an eye opener. There are barriers to availability of infrastructure, equipment and trained healthcare providers due to shortages in different states. Women in rural areas face financial barriers, geographical problems, socio-cultural barriers, patriarchal issues and lack of awareness or knowledge in accessing health care services. Many of the women do not even know that they have a health care facility close by. There is lack of faith in the quality of primary health care facilities. There are barriers in utilization of multi-contact services such as first antenatal contact or BCG immunization. People do not seek care from public health facilities due to distance from facilities, absence of staff, long waiting times, non-functional equipment and poor upkeep of facilities. All the above reasons lead to a low demand for and use of public health services. Indian women continue to have high prevalence of anemia in the world like we just discussed earlier. So some of the suggestions which come out of our discussions in this session are a three-pronged strategy which covers dietary diversification and use of iron fortified iodized salt, iron and folic acid supplementation and detecting and treating anemia which will accelerate the pace of reduction in anemia. Testing for detecting and treating anemia is essential. Undernourished women and women with low weight gain in pregnancy coming from food insecure families, if identified and provided take home supplements regularly will lead to pregnancy weight gain and reduction in low birth weights. Detection of non-communicable diseases which are asymptomatic in early stage is possible through routine screening programs. Now what are the ways to improve health? Undue weight gain is harmful to health. Overnutrition is associated with increased risk of hypertension, cardiovascular diseases and of course diabetes. These diseases occur right from 40s in Indian women. All these diseases are asymptomatic in the early age itself. Only by undergoing periodic health checkup can these diseases be detected early and effectively treated. Health checkup should be done at least once a year in women about 30 years. Early detection and effective treatment of non-communicable diseases is inexpensive. Early detection and management of this will definitely improve both the quality and longevity of life substantially. Health communication is definitely crucial. Uh, behavior change communications are the need of the hour and will help improve maternal and child health practices including nutrition in multiple settings. Most of the behavioral change uh, communications and the practices which are there in these behavioral change communications are targeted in, towards health. Mobile phones or community radio or interactive voice response facilities are important behavioral change communication methods to improve health and are being used by social change agents. Health education campaigns should be designed by change agents for demand generation among adolescents and women to utilize health services because unless and until a demand generation doesn't come from adolescents, unless and until they are not persuaded by change agents, this will not happen and uh, they need to utilize health services and government schemes that promote maternal health and health of children. They need to be made aware of these schemes as well. Involvement of frontline workers such as ashas, anganwadi workers, village key persons and youth including girls and boys will be effective in campaigns. Assessment of nutritional status in pregnant women is important. Mothers directly communicating with healthcare providers to study enhanced access to healthcare and emerging obstetric care will be useful. The nutritional status, cultural practices, food consumption and food security of rural adolescent girls who are beneficiaries of programs like the ICDS, SABLA, Scheme for Adolescents and many other such schemes should be looked into. There has to be repeated reinforcement along with research for adolescent girls and antenatal mothers of a well-drafted information, education and communication activity. 
So this brings us to the end of this session. I hope all of you have understood what are the harmful implications uh, on the health of women and adolescent girls which is caused due to nutritional insecurity, uh, food insecurity as well as lack of availing uh, adequate quality primary health care facilities in their vicinity. So I would advise an activity for you which you can do at your own pace and time. Conduct a need assessment of health issues in a village nearby. You can just walk into a village, become familiar with the people first and then in the later visits you could conduct a need assessment of health issues. It could be of children, it could be of women or anybody. Design an information education communication activity for ASHA and Anganwadi workers on nutritional needs of adolescent girls and pregnant women. Food security and health of women is not just an individual responsibility but that of the state too for sustainable development and a better tomorrow. Let us all gear up towards working for their health and upliftment. Thank you so much.